This video is for all of you ever asking the question, what is the difference between a bacteria and a virus? And as both can cause common infections, I can see where the confusion is coming from. Hey there, welcome back to How to Medicate and welcome to this video where we cover the differences between viruses and bacteria. And for those of you meeting me for the first time, my name is Raoul, I'm a medical doctor from the Netherlands and I'm making weekly medical videos to educate myself as well as you, my viewer. And this video also comes with a quick disclaimer, it's meant purely informative, this is not medical advice and if you're looking for medical advice, always contact your own doctor. We will start off with some general information on viruses. A virus is a submicroscopic agent which means it's so small it can't be seen with a normal microscope. For anyone wondering, they are between 20 and 300 nanometers and there are more than 6,000 different species of viruses and millions of different types. And one of its most remarkable features is that a virus is not considered alive. It's not considered a living thing like plants, animals or bacteria for that matter. Which is the first major difference between bacteria and viruses for those of you paying attention. Now a virus resembles a living organism in several ways. It possesses genes, which is its genetic code. A virus can evolve by natural selection and it can reproduce. It creates copies of itself through self-assembly in a host cell. However, a virus misses some basic characteristics any other form of life possesses. It does not have its own metabolism. It always requires a host to reproduce and it does not have a cellular structure like a cell wall. Now let's take a closer look at how viruses are built. We first will see it's surrounded by a protective coat of proteins called a capsid or a nucleocapsid. After entering a host cell, the virus will also be covered with an envelope, which is made up by the cell wall of the host cell. And in the protective coat, the nucleocapsid, you can find its genetic information. A virus can store its genetic data as DNA, like we humans have, or as RNA, which is a simpler form to store genetic information. Next up, let's take a look at bacteria. Bacteria are microorganisms of just a few micrometers, which already makes them a thousand times bigger than the biggest virus. Bacteria exist in many shapes or forms like rods, spirals, cones, and many more. And more importantly, they are everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. There are about 40 million bacteria in just one gram of soil and if you would add up all the bacteria at Earth, they would weigh more than all plants and animals combined. That's amazing. Interestingly, bacteria were also among the first life forms found on Earth. And that's maybe because they adapted to survive almost any circumstance. There are bacteria found in our soil where there is no oxygen. There are bacteria in the deep sea and even close to radioactive waste. So bacteria are everywhere. And this brings us to one of the major differences between bacteria and a virus. Almost any life form that is infected with a virus will become ill by the symptoms of the viral infection. However, almost all animal life depends on bacteria. And even we humans. We have bacteria in our intestines, which help us to digest food. And we have bacteria on our skin, which play a role in our immune defenses. So even we humans depend on some harmless bacteria. Now, if we take a closer look at bacteria, we see they're also surrounded by a capsule and a cell membrane. This is the outer layer. Inside the cell, you see some organelles. Organelles can be seen as organs of the cell. Our organs have functions in our bodies, but organelles have vital functions in the metabolism of a cell. The cell also contains the genetic information of the bacteria which is needed to reproduce. And lastly, a bacteria can have a flagellum, which is basically a fin which helps the bacteria to move around. And lastly, I wanted to focus on the differences in treating and preventing a bacterial or viral infection, starting off with viruses. And viruses are notoriously hard to treat. Often, treatments focus on treating the symptoms, as there is no cure or no treatment against most viruses. For example, if a viral infection causes you to have a fever, to have difficulties breathing, you will prescribe medication to lower the fever and to increase your ability to breathe. Now, in these circumstances, the viral infection is not treated, but the symptoms are treated. And therefore, it's still up to your own body, your own immune system to eradicate the virus. Now, there are some cases where antiviral therapy can be given to actually treat the virus. This is often aimed at stopping the reproduction abilities of a virus and thereby slowing down or stopping the viral infection. 
But unfortunately, antiviral therapy is only available for a few viruses. Hepatitis, B and C, HIV and herpes. Which brings us to the most effective way to treat or actually prevent viral infections, which is by vaccination. SA vaccination can bring you immunity to a specific virus, preventing you to become ill from it in the first place. Now for bacterial infections, it's a completely different story as bacteria are often sensitive to be treated with antibiotics. Now there are many different types of antibiotics, each working in a different way and effective in different bacteria. But most oftenly, they either stop the reproduction process, slowing down the bacterial infection, or they actually kill the bacteria, which can be even better. Unfortunately though, there are increasing amounts of super bacteria which become immune to the effects of certain antibiotics or all antibiotics. And this can be a problem. And if we, humanity, don't start to use our antibiotics more carefully, this can lead to untreatable bacterial infections and huge consequences for our healthcare systems and our overall global health. Now, if you want to learn more on specific antibiotics or on antibiotic resistance, I already made several videos on this topic. You can find them in the description or somewhere up there. Now, I hope you learned something because medically educated people make healthier decisions and that's what this channel is all about. Now, if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. This will help out my channel a lot. And don't forget to subscribe if you never want to miss such an awesome medical video again which will also help me to reach my new subscriber milestone. Let's say, let's reach 5k subs within a month, two months. We can do it. Thank you. And as always, I will see you next week. Bye bye.